So do you have an artistic eye? What does it even mean to have an artistic eye? I have something kind of artsy going on with the sun flare coming over my head here. Pretty cool. What does it even mean to have an artistic eye? If you've been shooting for a while and showing people these pictures, you may have heard things like, oh, you have an eye for photography. What does that even mean? And if you don't have it, can you get it? What can you do to develop or to hone a more artistic eye uh, or more art artistic approach to your photography? So I was thinking about that before and it is a beautiful spring day here in New York. So let's talk about photography and art. So the first thing I think that you have to think of is separating uh, photography uh, from art, from the technical part of photography, from the artistic part. And basically what I mean by that is, you know, the images that you're creating are being created by you basically in your head before you even take the picture. And then what you need to do is, you know, use your camera and become a technician. You're gonna use this machine, this computer, to create the art that you have basically in your mind. So yeah, there's a lot of technical aspects to photography that are part of the art, but separate from the art. So it's really not just about having a great camera and having some great lenses, stepped in the mud, having great camera and some great lenses and knowing technically how to use them, knowing your shutter speeds and your apertures, uh, you know, knowing how many frames you can get in a buffer and things like that. That's kind of aside from it. Those are the things that you need to know to be able to get the art from here into a visual medium. Uh, but that's not the art part of it. The art part of it is knowing what looks good and what doesn't look good. And of course, you know, that's super, super subjective. Art is, you know, in the eye of the beholder, right? So something that I create that I like and I show it to somebody else might have, might fall flat. You know, they might not like it at all. And that's totally fine. But what is it about art? What kind of art is the kind of art that perseveres, that, you know, a lot of people like, or almost everybody likes? You know, what, what differentiates the things that are hanging in a museum versus stuff that, you know, there's just kind of boring, mundane stuff? And a lot of that comes to, down to knowing what art is in general and what people through the ages, through decades and centuries, have found to be visually pleasing. Now, I don't wanna say that there's a formula, like a, a, a paint by numbers kind of formula, but there is kind of a formula. I might be a little lost here, but I'm doing okay. I'm in a part where there really isn't a trail. And I just ran up into some, oh, this, no, that's not a trail, that's a river. I ran up into some water. Let's go this way, it looks drier. So what were we at? Art, a formula to art. And there really isn't one, but there is one. You know, uh, art applies to, to everything, anytime, especially if you're learning the academic part of art, you're going to school for it, there are basically steps. There are parts to the recipe that go into creating art, whether it's songwriting. You know, there are, you know, look at all the songs, all the popular songs throughout history, and they all have things in common. You know, they all have, you know, verse, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Guitar solo, chorus. Um, you know, the movies, stories, books. You have a protagonist, you have, you know, an arc, you know, story arc, character arc. Um, and they're all different, and when they're done well, they're, it's almost, you almost can't tell that they're there. And that's really the, the thing that really makes the big difference, is putting those elements into place without the, the viewer even realizing that they're there. So in any great work of art, or any good work of art, all right, we got a tree down here. go over it. In any work of art, there's an element of a formula that you follow. If it's a visual art, like painting, photography, then you're gonna follow certain tried and true rules, let's call them, of photography to get the desired result. 
And when you do it long enough and you kind of immerse yourself in that world, you don't even realize that you're doing it. So what I mean by that is, you know, there are certain ways of composing images, of creating things that people will relate to, that will elicit, you know, the emotional response that you're looking for, that just work. You know, some simple composition rules, you know, rules of thirds uh, for composition, you know, different exposure things, all the fancy photo terms, leading lines, S-curves, things like that. Uh, those all come into play. And those are all gonna be part of the images that you're creating, whether or not you know you're even doing it at the time. But when you're looking for it, when you're looking for those things, those are the things that are going to kind of shine through in the end as the things that, you know, maybe get more of a response from the viewer. And, you know, like I said before, there's a reason why certain works of art are in museums. And you know, a certain part of that is basically, you know, there's things that are just embedded in our human DNA that find certain things uh, more beautiful, more moving, more emotional. And, you know, we all kind of have this in common, whether we realize it or not, and most of us don't. These are all things that we kind of share as humanity that we find beautiful, emotional. So knowing what those things are to start with is really what I'm talking about going back to the beginning, talking about having an artistic eye and how you can immerse yourself in that world, the art world, really is just you know not that difficult to do and kind of fun to do. And it's really about just spending time you know, appreciating famous works of art. Let's say, go to a museum, whatever the biggest art museum you have in the closest city to you, and just look around. Look around at what, what's there, what the people are you know, spending their time looking at. You know, get books, get art books. You know, whether it's photography or painting, it's a visual art, it doesn't matter what the actual medium is. Uh, spend time, you know, looking at every, just every day, you know, maybe even on on your phone, you know, subscribe to or follow some Instagram accounts that are art-based. Um, and just scroll through, scroll through images. And it's not about saying, okay, look, here's a painting and this is, you know, here's the paint by numbers elements of it and this is exactly what I need to do. It's about kind of seeing that subconsciously. You know, once you see enough of these things, once you go through these things enough and kind of immerse yourself in that artistic world, it all, it just comes naturally. You don't even realize you're doing it. Your brain knows it kind of in the background, but you don't even realize you're doing it at the time. Trail. You know, they do have these white markers on the trees somewhere, but when you're talking into the camera, I'm walking through the woods and it's early spring and there haven't been too many people through here yet. You can kind of lose the trail. All right, here we are. White marker. So just appreciating, you know, as myself, I appreciate other photographers. I follow other photographers' accounts. I look at the things that they're creating, the kind of work they're creating. And it's always evolving. It's always, you know, getting better and different. And, you know, it's not copying. It's seeing what other people are interested in, seeing what other people are doing. And, you know, taking those elements and just keeping them in your subconscious. So when you walk into a scene and it's like, wow, this, I, I gotta get my camera, I gotta photograph this. And at first you don't even necessarily know why you're doing it. You just have to do it. So then the, the process becomes, you know, kind of working the scene and getting out of it. Uh, you know, there's a reason why you picked up your camera in the first place. What is that reason? And it's getting out of it what it was. And, you know, it may just be all of those images that you have in your subconscious. You know, the, that's what's clicking. You know, you see something and it's like, it just, your brain just flies through all of these images that it's seen, hundreds and thousands of them. 
and realizes this is something that you know captures that this is one of those things uh, that people find beautiful that people find emotional so yeah I mean if you're looking to be more artistic spend time doing that spend time looking online through art through art that other people are creating if it's the visual thing like we're doing here with photography you know do it through visual art painting photography things like that and just spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes a day going through those kind of things. Like I said, it's not copying or finding the formula. It's just kind of like storing that away in the back of your mind. So that when you come across situations, you're already looking for that part of it. And you're not even there in the moment taking the photograph saying, okay, here's the shot. I've got to find the diagonal coming from the right and the diagonal coming from the center left with a midpoint in the one, you know, one third spot up on the top right. You're not putting those things together consciously like that in the moment. You're really putting them together subconsciously and you're just doing it because you just know what works, you know what's good. So if there's one thing I can, you know, give you to take away from this, it's, you know, you can develop an artistic eye, even if you don't think you have one to do. I don't think of myself as an artist, anything fancy like that. I've always thought of myself more as a technician with the camera. And over the years, I've tried to spend a lot more time working the art part of it, trying to incorporate art into the technical part of the camera to get the things that are in my head, to get those things into a visual medium that I can share. So I hope that makes sense. If you have anything, you know, you want to share, put them in the comments below. Any things that you do, any, you know, places that you go, uh, art, art, you know, to inspire you artistically, uh, share those in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for going on this little walk in the woods with me. Looking forward to a beautiful 2021 from the woods. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.